Hey everybody, welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm looking at the new update of Classic FX, so Classic FX 2.0, and Classic FX is an app by Igor Vasiliev, a pretty legendary iOS music app developer, whose I think best app is one called Fieldscaper, which is just mind blowing. So check that out if you haven't already. Now, in this video today, I'm going to do a few things. First thing, right now, I'm just going to let you hear what this sounds like. Secondly, I'm going to go through the main features. And thirdly, I'm going to talk about how we can, what kind of things we can do now that the parameters of this are exposed. And I'll show how to modulate that with an external LFO. Okay, so first let's just put on a sound. So this is Red Shrike, lovely ice gear synth. And this is completely dry. Now let me add some classic effects. Slowly. So, sounds delicious, right? Let me look at the main features of the app first, then I'll talk about what's new. So, here we can load a preset. We have a choice of presets here. We click on the one we want, and then we click set over here, and it will load the preset. So we can see here the preset that's loaded is radioactive, but it's not playing it. It's playing this preset, Super Wah. How do we know that? Because this yellow line is all the way over here on the right. So this midpoint divides the preset A and preset B. Now we can cycle between these presets and we can change the speed of that cycling using this marker. So here we have slower speeds. And here we have faster speeds. We can also jump from one preset to another. If I press A, it will slowly make its way over to A and it won't go back. And it will do that at a speed determined by this slider. So you see now it's moved quickly. If I press B now, it will jump over to B. If I change the slider and I press A, then we'll get a slow morphing. Okay, so that's that. Now, let's look at the kind of controls that we have inside a preset. So, First thing, let's look over at the right. We have dry and wet mix. By the way, beautiful interface, right? Beautiful interface. Output level. We have an envelope follower here. This will adjust its sensitivity to the amplitude of the input signal. So with a high sensitivity, Louder sounds will make more of an effect on the thing that's going on. Here we have the echo. So if I change this, we're going to be changing the echo rate.
echo feedback and echo level. Lovely echo on this. Here we have the width. Echo does get loud with a lot of feedback, so I'll turn it down. Stereo width, I guess. And here, one of my favorite controls, the modulation rate. Now, of course, this would be a great thing to modulate through the exposed parameters. Modulation depth, and the overall level of the effect. Now, some of the presets, the ones which say rhythmic, in these ones, the sequencer is important. So you can use a sequencer to modulate the level of the effects. So you can drag these pointers around. You can change the curve types, linear, logarithmic, exponential. You can change the number of steps in a sequence. You can change exactly where in the sequence it's being activated. You can do that for A, you can do that for B. Okay. Um, over here we have a help section with a very, very thorough manual. Congratulations, Igor. I love a good, I love a good manual. A lot of attention to detail here. Um, what else, what else? Well, let's look at the EQ. So this is one of the new things. There are basically three new things. So one is that this EQ has been added. Second thing, a reverb has been added. And the third thing is that the parameters have been exposed. Okay. Now, if we press A here, it will use the EQ for A to do the EQ for B as well. If this is deselected, the EQs will be separate for both of them. Okay. So, Let's look at this EQ over here. So we have three bands. Now here we can set the mid frequency of the middle band and how narrow or wide that bell will be. And the amount of gain. So we can do that for mid, low, you can hear the difference quite clearly there. A little bit hard to drag. That's nice. Over here, the high. So this EQ can really help you dial in the sound you want. And then we have the reverb. Damping will control how much high frequency remains in the reverb. Here we can adjust the low cut. So it's not too boomy. Pre-delay the reverb size. So with a high pre-delay and a high reverb size, it's going to sound like a really large space. Igor is quite famous for a reverb app that he did. I think it was one of his early apps. I forget the name now. Okay, so that is the EQ and the reverb. Just go through a couple of presets. 
Oops. So I gotta click on FX again. Love this interface. A lot of the effects are very subtle until you really crank up the, uh, the levels, the depths, and so on, the feedback. Obviously, some presets will be more suited to some sounds than others. So, there are more presets, but I want to make this short today. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is using MIDI LFOs to modulate the... Well, I mean, we could use that to modulate all kinds of things. For example, we could use it to modulate the modulation rate. But I'm going to look at... You can hear the changes happening already there, I believe. And you can see what's going on here, right? So, how have we set that up? Okay, so, if we look at MIDI LFOs, we can see that at this red one, this is LFO1, and it's active, and this is the CC and channel that, we, that we'll send the MIDI data out from. Okay, so, channel 1, CC46. Now, if we click, let me show you that again more clearly. If I go into AUM and I click at the bottom of this channel, the channel that has Classic FX in it, I click here, let me show you that again. Okay, so I click the little EQ sign here. And I go to MIDI sources and I choose MIDI LFOs as a source. I go back out and I go down and I find Classic FX and then, in this particular case, I want to do the morphing value. So I click on that, and I put in the channel and CC, which was over here, if you remember. And then I press Learn, and then that is saved in there. And it's now receiving that MIDI data. Okay, so let's just look at what MIDI LFOs is doing. This is a really cool little app. Why I like this app is because it's capable of really nice slow rates. But it's also able to do a few other things. So let me put a little bit of a faster rate here. If you notice, now it's moving and then it's stalling and then it's moving again. When it's all the way down here, the movement is completely smooth. So the more we increase this rate, the more we get these kind of staggered movements happening. And you can see that down here. Now another thing is this amp button. So look at that. When it's down here, it's following the waveform curves. But as we add this, it starts to get more erratic behavior. It's deviating more, jumping around. So that brings in more of an element of randomness. We can also use the offset to 
jump around. So very nice little app this. Now, like I said, we could also use that to do uh, the modulation rates. So let's just, ah, well, okay, let's just get that off. Let's go back out here. So let's go to B, I think we're using B. Oh, well, we're in the middle, kind of. Okay, let's just do it for B. Okay, so modulation rate, channel one, CC 46. Okay, and let's go out. And you can see now the modulation rate is being modulated by MIDI LFOs. Sweet. So everybody, thank you for um, watching and please give this a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Click the bell to make sure you get updates. You definitely want to get notified when a new video comes out so you don't miss any codes that are going. And remember, free codes means free apps for those viewers who don't understand what a code is. Code just means when you go to the App Store, you can buy an app or there's another thing you can do where you just put in a code. So if you win, I will send you the code. And everybody, make sure that you, if you do put a comment and you want to win, make sure that you come and you know, look back two days from now. If you win, I will send you a message in YouTube in the comments telling you that you have won. I will reply to your comment telling you you've won. So um, make sure that you're receiving email notifications from YouTube or check back in about two days time and see if you've won. All right, everybody, thanks a lot. And thanks a lot for your support of the channel. Great, everyone. Have a nice day. See you next time.